Hi, I'm Ted. Welcome to River Channel and the lush studios of the Tent Mahal where I'm doing my best not to be devoured by bugs. I'll continue the Penobscot guiding series today with uh, taking a look at the crib works, second class five on the Penobscot River. Uh, a lot going on there. Uh, a lot of weird eddy lines, a lot of rocks, and uh, there are a couple markers and keys that really kind of help that consistency. Uh, so I'm going to impose upon my good friend Todd to show us sort of his keys as we go through. Um, so. Um, Feel free to comment, uh, let us know your strategy as you go. You know, certainly the Penobscot River is a great community and love to have more people involved, uh, you know, as we progress through the videos and, and get your views on it. Please hit that subscribe button if, it's, uh, if the videos are helpful for you. Appreciate your support both on and off the river. Um, so let's get to it. All right, so here we are. Uh, leaving the Balin Eddy. Any particular strategies on leaving the Balin Eddy? You like to leave up high, down low, does it matter? I, I like to leave up high, yeah, and ferry out enough that the current starts to turn my boat, but it, it, I've got enough momentum to carry me across so that I touch the Eddy on the, on the other side. You want to you like coming into that eddy with upstream as much as you can, or just nope. doesn't really matter. Nope. Just as I, let it, I let it fade right here. Yep. And right at the bubble where the bubbles spread. Yep. Like to catch that, and that'll suck you into the rock at the yep. bottom of the eddy, and then you're lined up reasonably close to being right on top of the first wave and the wave train above the bridge. You like being inside that wave train. Nope, nope, nope. I bust over the wave train right at the first wave. But then go on the inside. Yeah, yeah, on yeah. the inside. Less risk of getting bounced around. Yep. And it's harder to get across once you're down by the bridge. Right. You've got to use a more extreme angle. It's It's a more... You got more, you get more time to readjust after you come over it from the top. Fishing guy. So now you hear approached uh, T loss. Yep. Still pretty close to this this rock over here. I was a little closer right there than I usually am, but yeah. I usually have people take a stroke or two right there. So T loss, um, your bow is kind of stuck way over here. Yep. You're kind of right quartering that, so that kind of kicks you, kicks you up onto the eddy, onto the uh, onto the line between into the seam. Yep. Here, right down in here. Do you ever notice? Does that get higgly piggly for people? A boat kind of jostles around. And do you give a warning at all? Tell people, hey, we're gonna hit this wave. Stay in the no, boat. No, it 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 really doesn't seem to wiggle people around much. It it's pretty smooth right there. As long as you're not like smashing right into it, <laughs> you're just kind of brushing by the wave. So here's our marker waves. Yep. Um, obviously this one right here, and this one right here. You look like you're angling a little bit more to the left. Do you like to be right in the middle? Do you like to be? I, I like to be right in the middle, and and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to wait for the boat to come further down. Great focus you got in your boat there. Yep. <laughs> still looking, and I'm and I'm, st I'm still high, so I'm gonna wait, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna have anybody paddle. I'm just gonna hold my angle, and I'm gonna let the boat, let the river move the boat down on the diagonal because the water's really low. Yeah, eighteen two thousand. So here's what we call the marker wave. I don't know if I can go back to that a little bit. Better look at it. Where do you like to hit? So this is the diagonal marker wave, or I was taught it's, it's called. Yeah, I like to be at you know eighteen two thousand. I like to be low on that diagonal near the bottom. So down in here, yeah. like which one of your tubes is that you try to put down here? Put the center of your boat, the right yeah, tube, center. left tube, center of the boat, right there. Uh, 
you want to stay low at uh, low down in here, low water because of finger. Yep. There you don't want to hit finger, but at high water, do you tend to stay up high on the wave? Yes. And with what kind of angle do you like to come into this marker wave? If we're, you know, straight on, it's twelve o'clock. Um, I typically hit it if I'm where I want to be on it. I hit it at like one or two o'clock and let it turn the boat into the first wave. So is that turn? Yep. And I was I was up higher on the wave than I wanted to be. So I had a little more angle there. I was closer to 2 o'clock than I was 1 o'clock. Yep. So it pushed the boat a little bit more down into the first wave. And and saved my run. Because <laughs> I, I was off my line up until right here. Good carpenters know how to fix their mistakes, right? Yeah. So now it looks like... You have a sight line. You have get like kind of like with the with a gorge. You have almost a straight shot straight through this. Um, I don't usually like hitting this thing over over in here. Two bounce. I think some yep. people call it guide. No, another version of guide popper. launcher, guide popper. Yeah. But this wave here is this sort of a a bullseye for you to square up on this down here. I I'm not. I don't. I'm not looking at any of that. I'm I'm looking more at pillow. Making sure the pillow stays over here. Yep. Nice pop there. But you are squared right up on that wave. Yep. Because if you're not squared up, when it kicks you over here and bad mm -hmm. things happen, or then it kicks you over here and bad things happen. Don't ask me how I know that. So down here, this seems to be a crux point in the yep. crib. How'd you come out of here? Because if you're over here, too close. Right. If you notice, I'm much closer to pillow than I am pelican. Yes. Um, I, I prefer to be on the pillow side. The pelican side gets kind of trashy over there and can punch your boat towards pain in the ass rock. Which is right which is over there. there. <laughs> so if I've got some momentum moving across this the, that current that comes down through the first shoot, um, I've got a better chance of staying away from pain in the ass and guardian. Pain in the ass right here. Yep. So you've made it past the bottom yeah. of first shoot. And now there's going to be a transition here a little bit to some degree. Yep. Um, now, now it's typewriter waves. Now we're focusing on the typewriter waves. Um, running here and yep. here and pushing them with... Not squaring up on them, I'm just kind of send you and guide you over here to the boulder pile. Yep. You don't want to do that. Um, is there a, a particular, do you like a seam here and not getting over pushed the typewriter waves? I, I do. Like right straight ahead on that on that weaker end of the typewriter waves is where I prefer to be. What, do you, what happens if you find yourself over here? Um, it you depends get, on the angle of the boat. Um, like if I've got too much right angle, I'm, I'm fighting to get over there. And I catch the typewriter waves with with a right brooch, then it'll spin the boat to the right, and you'll end up having to do a spin after the typewriter waves come all the way around, yeah. reset, and then there. Seems like too. I see a lot of people over here, and then they hit these typewriter waves, or they get over too far, and then they try to turn the boat, and they come in with the left angle yeah. when typewriters are right over the boulder pile. Yeah. A lot. Several of our guides during training today were having problems right here. Because they're coming into the typewriter waves and they're looking at the final shoot. And they want to turn the boat Towards at final the final shoot. shoot. And you've got to wait until after you're over the typewriter waves. So they'd hit the typewriter waves and get pushed over. And they were never in the boulder pile, but they were boulder shoot. shoot yeah. Seems like for me, too, I want to come in here and keep like that 1 o'clock angle yep. until I'm through the typewriter waves mm -hmm. to point away from the boulder pile. So yeah, clearly they see, still see that kind of one o'clock angle yep. there, one o'clock angle there, and now you're geared up towards final shoot. Do you ever, at this point, are you thinking about the whaling wall? Um, not quite. Not quite. Just thinking about smiling pretty for the camera. Smiling pretty, pretty for the camera, for the whaling wall now. No. Yeah. So. I don't know what it was. Last year, it seems like I'd point the boat right. I had like a two-week series where it was just sucking me over there. 
So what's your you're coming through here. How are you going to avoid the Wailing Wall? Um, well, if I angled correctly coming through the first shoot, then I'm going to come out pointed more towards the video rock, and I'm going to keep the boat pointed that way and have my crew paddle for the eddy below it. So pretty close. And there you are. Yep. <coughs> um, a lot of times we try to set safety on both sides. Uh, high water, really difficult to hit that in the left-hand side oh, yeah. right away. So Eddie here on the right river right side over here and then ferry across. Um, seems a low water. It's more manageable. Yep. Get over there. Can we, can we skip back to uh, the first shoot to the whaling wall? Great so here. So freeze it right there. So a mistake that people make is when they get turned coming down the final shoot towards the whaling wall, hmm. or even with their bow facing to the left of the whaling wall, they still try and turn their boat all the way across the whaling wall to try and run back to the right side. There is all kinds of room. Curse right over there. In over this, there. In this eddy right here. If your boat is pointed that way, run that way, reset, and then ferry back across Gross. the face of the whaling wall. Um, and it's it's way better than hitting the whaling wall sideways with an old lady in your boat that shouldn't be swimming <laughs> the arches. I have found sometimes if I'm going to hit the whaling wall... Try to back paddle and then I just square up to it, call the hold on and just hit it head on and yeah. hopefully bounce back. Then there's elation all around. Jubilation for everyone. <laughs> Not premature jubilation. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs>